was a deceased male victim wrapped in plastic in the back seat, laying across the back seat of a car. He helped us, he helped our deputies uh, guide us in here to the 5600 5, block of Center Street, where the first two responding deputies saw the deceased individual laying in the back seat of the car, and at the same time, heard a male and female voice from inside a eight by 10 shed, approximately maybe two feet, three feet from, from where our, our homicide victim was located in, in the vehicle. Um, they bang on the door, uh, asked the, the subjects to come out and are met with a, uh, a lot of profanity telling the, the deputies to back off uh, that he has a hostage. Um, fearing for the hostage's safety, they grab a crowbar. These deputies are being diligent. They're going in to make sure they can get this hostage, not knowing what's on the other side of that door. Up until the point where this erratic, profanity-filled individual also stated now that he was armed, that he had a gun, that he had a firearm. That at that point, they had to retreat, do a safe distance from the shed uh, and activate properly our SWAT team and our negotiators. They arrive on scene a short time later, get set up, relieve the responding deputies and begin immediately uh, continue these, these negotiations from a bullhorn uh, perspective. During this time, as they're trying to talk to the individual, they can see through a small window above an air condition that this suspect that continues to get more erratic is waving this gun in a threatening manner. Now, what do I mean by a, a threatening manner? Imagine a thin aluminum shed where probably practically any caliber could, could uh, go make entry outside of that, that, that shed. So not only are the people inside that shed in danger, anyone in close proximity, close proximity to this, this armed homicide suspect uh, is in danger too. The caller also tells us at some point that the person responsible for this homicide is inside this shed as well. So we feel confident that our bad guy, our person who now has this poor hostage that's not allowed to leave, is holding her against her will. Matter of fact, that at some point during the negotiations, this nine and a half hour negotiation, where most individuals start to de-escalate, they start to calm down, we start to, uh, make some progress in, in, in obtaining that peaceful resolution. He was just the opposite. He became even more hostile. He was talking about, uh, I promise I will die here today. I'm not coming out and I'm not letting the hostage out. I'm going, I'm going to burn them, except for one. That's my insurance policy. So he was saying that his hostage that he was holding was his insurance policy and that things will go boom. At some point towards the end of this nine and a half hour negotiation, this very hostile, again, armed homicide suspect uh, reveals himself by the window and one of our SWAT operators is able to discharge his rifle, um, striking our suspect one time. At that time, that immediately activates hostage rescue. So they immediately, the SWAT team immediately makes entry and goes in and is able to remove this hostage to a place where she's now free of any further danger. It's because of this SWAT operator's actions that she is now safe and free from any further harm. Our suspect is Juan Sarmiento. He's 42 years of age and he's no stranger to law enforcement. He's been arrested on eight felony charges. Um, one of them, probably the most concerning, is an aggravated assault and aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. He's not new to law enforcement. He was transported to South Bay Hospital um, immediately after the shooting. Our, our SWAT medics on scene began those life-saving measures and the paramedics responded, took over, transported him to South Bay Hospital, where I was just recently notified he had succumbed to his injuries. Our, uh, unlike, unlike every other use of deadly force, you, you have to allow me some leniency here 
with an exception. I normally tell you who the deputy involved is. I'm going to withhold his name at this point because he is an undercover detective and currently involved in several investigations that I believe re un releasing his name could place him, his family, and investigation uh, in harm. So I'm going to hold off on, on releasing his name. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement has just arrived. They begin now uh, conducting interviews, conducting the investigation and takeover at this point. What questions can I try to try to answer? Yeah, great question. A, a recently new girlfriend is what we're being told. Uh, uh, a recently new relationship. That's that's all we know at this point. Um, she was she was extremely frantic as, as we rescued her, and they're they're interviewing her now. Try it one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, for obvious reasons, he made up an excuse of why he had to leave and did the right thing and called us. So we have someone who did the right thing today, uh, and we we saved the hostage because of it. Yeah, not sure at this point. Um, we don't even have him identified. Uh, we haven't made entry into the car. That will come with a search warrant. So we will work that part of it, but we don't even know who he is. Uh, nonetheless, what the relationship is. Hopefully this newfound girlfriend, because the newfound girlfriend stayed at this same residence on and off as our victim of our homicide. So we know there's a relationship there. I just can't say unequivocally what it is at this point. I don't, it would, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what her involvement was at this point. Again, they're interviewing her now. That will be uh, some information that we'll be able to put out la later as we continue this investigation. So just to be clear, the person that called 911 alerted you to the situation was not the new girlfriend that was held hostage? Correct, no. The new girlfriend was the hostage, was indeed the hostage. The other individual who, who called us and, and led us to this crime scene was a friend. Uh, again, a, a friend who was asked to, dis to come help me dispose of some trash. Got there, saw that what he wanted him to dispose of is what was a body of a deceased individual. And again, for obvious reasons, backed off, made up an excuse and contacted us. You know, in, in nine and a half hours, you would think that you would get to know someone a little better. He never allowed that opportunity. Again, most people over this time frame would start to de-escalate from mere exhaustion alone. Uh, he was just the opposite. He became more hostile all the way to the end. Can you spell Juan's last name for us, please? Yes, I can. Juan Sarmiento. It's S-A-R-M-I-E-N-T-O. And we'll put that out in a press release that we're, we'll, we'll put out here real quick. I don't have that information at this time. How we'll, long will this road remain closed here? Uh, that's a good question. As long as it takes to properly uh, conduct the investigation at this point, there's some, some search, search warrants that have to be obtained. Once they thoroughly comb all the evidence and everything they can do, believe we know it's a main thoroughfare through, who, here, through White Mama, we'll get it open as expeditiously as possible. No, this is a good community. Why Mama's become a, a very good community here in Hillsborough County. Um, this this was a surprise to us tonight. The individual involved wasn't because he's 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 not a person that's new to violence. But uh, here in this this neighborhood, violence is new. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, everyone. Uh, one one shot to the upper torso. I can't tell you, it'd be too preliminary to tell you that. That will all be figured out as we complete the investigation. Thank you.